Anna McGinley, good morning to you. How you doing? Morning, man. So uh, I would suspect that um, Monaghan must be feeling that, like, you know, they've made a, a little bit of history for themselves, the first team in 30 years, and it's the crushing sight of Tyrone in Croke Park that awaits them. They can't be happy about that, and you guys must be absolutely thrilled that it's Monaghan. Uh, certainly, Tyrone would be a, a pretty positive place at the minute, and I'd fully agree. <laughs> for, for Monaghan, they have achieved history, and yet whenever they've got the head up and got off that great scenes in, in, in Salt Hill, there they are, and their, their, their biggest demon or their biggest dragon lies ahead, Tyrone and Croke Park, has overturned them so many times, including years just like this year where Monaghan were the better team in Ulster and Monaghan were the better team in so many ways, and yet come to Croke Park, uh, Tyrone, Tyrone bossed them in, in lots of them games. They go back to the, to the Sean Cavan tackle, but I, I remember that game well. Tyrone were well on top of that game. Yes, they're only two points up, but to me, looking at it, there was still only going to be one winner, and even McManus had to get through got to get the goal. There was still 15 minutes left, and I, I would have still assumed that Throne would have come through the game. So, uh, yeah, Throne have the upper hand. The, the big thing for me, and, and there's a Throne, I suppose, comparison. In 03, whenever we played Kerry, Kerry were our dragon, and it put us in a psychological, such a special, special place that we raised to a performance level that, that, that we'd never hit before then. And that is the carrot dangling there for Monaghan. Uh, and if with the positivity that they've got through the Super 8s and with that whole county now behind them in, in such a brilliant way, they might just fall into that special, special zone. And if they do that, then they can achieve two histories in, in, in the one year. Tell a little bit, let's focus on Tyrone before we go back to uh, what you expect from Monaghan. Where did this quality of performance come from? At what point over the season did you think that actually Tyrone were capable of putting together that second half that they put together? Uh, 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 and it was really the second half of the second half. Uh, this this year, like Mickey has done a lot of management over his years, but he has probably worked harder this year at trying to work this team. In the National League, he was consistently trying to tweak uh, the forward line. And I know from chatting to some of the players that numbers of training through Sigerson or through under twenty or through other competitions, numbers of training were 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 limited, and he wasn't getting to work with the same men that he was then picking at, at the weekends. Uh, he worked through the National League the whole time to try and find forwards to give him a plan B so that what happened against Dublin last year wouldn't happen again. By the time the championship started against Monaghan, he had selected Mark Bradley and Lee Brennan as his two men having had all the experiments in the league. They were his two men and they went and both got injured and both taken off in that game and they're only now returning uh, to play. Since then, he's then reinvented again. He's used Richard Donnelly, who wasn't available during the National League. He's used him as a full forward, and that has worked well at times. Conor McCallisky found a great vein of form at the time, and then he sort of lost it a wee bit again. Richard Donnelly still done well as a target man full forward on Sunday, but he didn't get the scores he, he would have wanted. Uh, so, Mickey, still, it is still a work in progress, but having the two men that he put faith in after the National League back certainly is, 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 is a big bonus. But where Throne are at, was it Donegal tailing off? Was it Energy tailing off? Was it Throne up in the gears? Was it was it the subs? We, we, we don't really know, but certainly the, the positivity, the, the positive way that Throne has ended that game is right through all the supporters. We loved what we've seen. It was a special final 15, 20 minutes. Uh, but we still don't know, can they do that from the start? Or is it a cagey start that they prefer? Or is it the subs that done it? There are so many unknowns at the minute. Yeah, like the the big thing, the big talking point for the weekend has been just the impact of Mickey Hart's bench, and obviously that comes from some of the players you talked about, just having more players and having more competition for places. But to what extent do you feel that it, there's been a mental shift this year, a progression to the point where they're really believing in the squad mentality? I think I think this this particular group of players would have had that over a number of years. I've seen huge togetherness whenever the one Ulsters, the the whole collective celebration of all the players. They they really do all seem to buy in. I uh, always out of interest to just keep an eye on boys that you would have known to have been disappointed not to have been used, and yet when the camera just pans around, you see them celebrating and and the big smiles on the faces. So so this is a pretty together squad. Not only that, but when a panel knows that it is the panel that makes the difference in a championship match. All of the all of the chat, all of that standard sort of cliched chat, oh, we're a team, it's not about the 15 boys, it's about the whole squad. That actually means something. Everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. And like Harry Lahorn got in the last day where he wasn't used for a few games, and yet he made the game winning change. So whenever subs realise, well, he wasn't used for a couple of games, but obviously he's still in the manager's thoughts, 
and he's obviously still trusted to go into the biggest games. That creates a very, very happy camp. And Mickey, yes, there was a couple of wee things last year, but I think they were out of the ordinary. Generally speaking, Mickey has always had them boys completely playing for him and, 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 and no more than, than at the minute. Before we get to uh, Pat McInerney to get the view from Monaghan, I just want to play you this. It's the final few moments of the game from Salt Hill as it was relayed on Northern Sound. The commentary here is Sean McCaffrey, Nudie Hughes and Frank Brady. Connor oh, blow up, Connor! Through the middle. Desi was screaming for it. Connor had a shot for it. 18 points, 16 points to 8. 8 point lead for Monaghan. Connor laying up and round him. We're waiting for the long whistle. There's going to be a pitch invasion. Maliki, the team are all surrounded by the supporters here on the sidelines. I see the Stewarts trying to hurt them. It's over! It's over! Monaghan! 30 years! 1988! Pitch invasion below us! Oh, it's as good as winning in All-Ireland. There's no trophies today, but there's a bit of history. Yeah, a bit of history. Pat McEnany, good morning to you. How you doing? Morning, doing good, doing good. Yeah, good, good, uh, good week to be a man in person. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, I, I mean, I, I yeah, I, I realise it's impolite to mention somebody's age, but you're just about old enough to remember what '88 was like. How does this compare? Um, I suppose uh, I'm uh, a little bit older now, and uh, I've got to experience a, a few defeats over the years. So it's 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 quite nice to be able to sit back and enjoy the week and. Uh, you know, prepare for next Sunday and uh, hopefully, you know, I think the, the, the special thing about next Sunday is that we have two teams going to Crow Park, you know, so um, I don't think that's ever happened in the history of Monaghan, so uh, there's a great sense of achievement, there's a great sense of uh, belief um, and there's a great sense of pride, I think. I think, um, I think that's the overriding thing in Monaghan. Uh, you know, people in Monaghan, we, we, we know that we're, we're not going to be always boxing at the top table, but... We've been doing pretty well this past uh, 15, 16 years, and uh, you know, next, next Sunday could be a special day for us. Yeah, totally. Um, Seamus is the, the miners as well, so it is a huge day, which means it'll be pretty much everybody from the entire county hopefully showing up to, to Crow Park as well. How do the players now make sure that they don't get a bit carried away by the fact that you've made history? Because with a small county, you know, winning an Ulster title that first time, there's a bit of a letdown after that. When at the second time, you think that maybe the team is ready to kick on. Finally now, it seems like they are ready to kick on. So how do you just make sure, if you're involved in that management setup, that this week you're telling the players, look, try and keep yourselves away from the excitement, but also try and feed off it and get that balance right? Absolutely. I think, you know, we've got a, we've got a few uh, uh, experienced boys in there. You know, you have, you have uh, Collie Walsh, you have the, the Wiley brothers, you have particularly Vinnie Corey and these lads, the Manzi. You know, these boys know that, you know, that, that you don't get many opportunities like this. And, uh, you know, they'll be preaching that to the younger players. A big opportunity here for us. You know, I think uh, the way we, we, we played against Kerry, I thought that was a big statement, the way we played. We got caught with a sucker punch and then how we recovered you know, to go to Galway and win was a, was a big statement. And, and that experience and that learning call for the younger players will, I think, help them next Sunday. The win against Galway, like, I think people are probably underrating it because Galway had already qualified, but it's an away game and it's double scores against a Galway side who are still a really good team who, who they believe themselves are capable of winning in All-Ireland. Uh, absolutely, you know, and I, I think people underestimate that. And, uh, you know, just listening to the end of there, even Tyrone going to, to Donegal, like was, was, you know, to go to Donegal and, and, and win away from home is, is a massive achievement for Tyrone. And it was a big statement by them as well. And for us, yes, Galway were qualified and that just little, at that level though, you know, if you drop a notch at, at that, you know, a quarter final stage, you're always going to get found out. And um, maybe, go, but still, I, I, I take your point and, and I agree with you. Uh, and one of, one of them were pretty confident. I think after the first one, we all recovered, the supporters and the players recovered after a couple of days. I think there was a sense of belief that we could go to Galway and win because we went down the National League and it was a game that I was at and, uh, you know, Galway, I think, maybe led by three or four points and we gradually sucked them in and we were starting to really dominate them uh, when we got Fintan Kelly sent off and the game turned. But up to that point, we looked really strong and we looked we were going to come away with two points and anybody that was down at that game would have felt we're capable of going to Salt Hill and winning here. Do you think there's a potential to run estimate Monaghan this weekend, Pat, given what's happened over their most recent meetings in Crow Park? Sorry, give me that question again. Do you think there's a potential that Tyrone could underestimate Monaghan given uh, their recent history at Croke Park? Uh, no, Mickey Hart doesn't do that or Tyrone don't do that with Monaghan. No, no. Uh, we're neighbours' children up there. They know us uh, as well as we know them and uh, doesn't, there's no chance of that. No, I, I think uh, Tyrone, I think, with, uh, I think I understand I heard someone talking to the bookies, they're slight favourites. Uh, it's, it's a... 
you know, I, I think uh, possible maybe because someone called a raid on Sunday night, I think it's a 50-50 game and it's, it's there to be won for either team. Yeah. And just to go back to you, what, what do you make of the, the way that uh, Monaghan have kind of blitzed the Super 8s? That they've definitely clearly been, well, certainly their performances and the results have, have been uh, of a team who are justifiably in the last four and you can make a case that they're actually a more dangerous team than Galway at the moment. Yeah, if you take if if you take Dublin out of this out, out of the Super Eight or leave them out of the conversation for a wee while, Monon have easily been been the most uh, impressive team during the Super Eights, uh, and that comes off a National League where they were massively impressive too. Obviously, getting the win over Dublin and Croke Park in the final day, so that's Monon can take huge credit. The defeat of Kildare and Croke Park was a big big win. Uh, the performance of put in again Kerry of just not closing over the line was probably a huge learning curve. The two-week break has been absolutely priceless for them. If that was a one-week break, I think they would have struggled to get over the, the Kerry defeat still, and Galway wouldn't have just took the eye off the ball, I think, as much with, with two weeks until their semi-final. I, I think their performance against Galway, the, the sheer energy and intensity level was so, so impressive, but Galway weren't weren't at it either, completely understandably from, from my point of view. So Monon have been massively impressive. They beat Tyrone in, in Blaney, they beat Tyrone in Oma, they beat, uh, they beat Dublin, they have uh, to do with Kerry but really beaten them really and they've beaten Galway to an extent down, down in Salt Hill. So Monon have very little left to prove bar the big one, beating a big team in Croke Park uh, and that will hang over but just hearing that commentary as a thrown man puts shivers up in my spine because if, if, if them players latch on to that sort of positivity they can reach a level and they can just, through sheer, that sheer momentum, I think they have probably more momentum than, than what Throne has. And uh, if they use that, then they, then they, they absolutely can do a job in Throne on, on, uh, on Sunday. Yeah, no, no question about that. I, I did want to ask you about Niall Morgan because he's going to be a key focus of the preview tactically coming up to the weekend given the obvious impact of Rory Began at the opposite end of the pitch. And we were talking about the Galway hurlers a few moments ago and their ability to be zombie-like in kind of bringing performances out of the bag even though they haven't been playing that well. And I think huge credit has to go to Niall Morgan this morning after the way he started poorly, gave away a goal clearly in the first half for Michael Murphy to finish to the back of the net to be so brilliant in the second half. And his kickouts were Began-esque at times in that second half, weren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Even even in the first half, before the couple of mistakes, his kickouts were exceptional. He was standing up in the commentary box and, and his kickouts were absolutely on point. He, he hit a few brilliant ones. Uh, the, the, the short kickout was a gamble and he was let down by his defender who, who waited on it, which it was just with the likes of McHugh lurking in the background you can't afford to do and then Murphy's finish. He almost actually saved it. It sort of went through his diving arms. Uh, he then, the, the other short one that, that got threw up for a hot ball again, uh, there seems to be these quibbles and sometimes referees are, are more uh, tuned in to that than, than others. But the way he recovered a number of years ago, Niall Morgan had a complete meltdown up in Bally Buffet. And I think he showed how much he has matured yesterday in that and scoring that final point. The one we caveat, I would say, about the final point, Trone had won it at that stage, Trone. Donegal were broke, so it was sort of like a, a hero score. He, uh, it, he, there, there was no real pressure. If that was all square, if Trone were point down, then it's different. But still, the way he scored it, the big smile on his face when he came back, and no theatricals, no silly stuff, just a, a player absolutely beaming uh, for, for having scored the point he did. And as I say, you were absolutely right, his kickouts were a huge part of Trone turning the screw and getting on the front foot, because Donegal... Donegal were we a bit confused in their tactics and I think that, that had a big say in the game. A, a lot of this game, I suppose, has been painted as Trone's power display in the final 15 minutes, but you'd, you'd, you'd have to query what happened on a goal at that stage. Uh, but uh, certainly Niall Morgan's kickouts were a key factor in, in switching that game round and getting Trone onto the front foot. We'll come back to that um, in a minute. I just wanted to ask Pat McInerney one quick question about why things are going so well in Monaghan and why they have been going so well over the last decade or so. Pat, it, you know, it's not a coincidence that the miners are also there. It's not a coincidence that this team has been able to regenerate over the last couple of years and bring players through relatively quickly. What do you put the success that Monaghan are enjoying at the moment down to? Uh, I think a number of small things. A number of small things over this past 20 years. I think if you, you know, our county board structures is quite strong. You know, we, we, you know, some of the, 
the previous men I mentioned, you know, I think of fellas like Sean McKeague, who was our county board chairman, who went on to be president. Porrick Duffy, uh, of course, was very influential at the early stages of, the, of, of, uh, of this as well, who went on to be, uh, be the head of the GA. So was, our county board structures were very good. I think our development in Clahan was, uh, on a, that was built under the chairmanship of John Connolly, was a massive, uh, uh, thing for us as well. It gives us a centre, it gives us, it gives the, all our, uh, uh, county teams a place to train um, I think um, you know fellas like Paul Finley Vinnie Corey Owen Lennon who's now a current selector them boys were, 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 were big players back in the early 2000s under uh, my brother Seamus at the time got beaten in a couple of months to the finals but I think that team that them uh, era of players, Paul Finley, them fellas, realised, you know, that it wasn't good enough to be just training on a Monday and Tuesday night um, and, uh, you know, go drinking on a Friday night. That kind of, uh, that kind of whole um, method of playing football back then wasn't going to succeed at the top table. And I think from that day onwards, uh, people realised, players realised in Monon what it actually takes to be a good county uh, player. And, uh, you know, you take the, you've got Vinnie Curry there at the moment, you've got Desi Moan, you've got the Wileys, you know, experienced players that knows what it takes to dine at the top table. And I presume everybody in Monaghan is starting to believe that a, an Ireland final appearance is a realistic thing this year, that, like, this team hasn't come from nowhere, has come through the way that they've come through, has strengthened every line of the pitch. So you must be beginning to dream. Absolutely. Um, the, the, there is absolutely no doubt about that. I think we've, we've been knocking on the top uh, four table for a while to get in there. We haven't got in there this past six or seven years uh, where we're now in a semi-final. And, and um, you know, I think there's a belief in Monon that, you know, I, I think Dublin are at a different level. I've got to be honest and say that. I think that they're on, at the moment right now they're on their own at a different level. But Monaghan could feel that, you know, we can beat anybody else in the country at the moment. And, uh, you know, it would be a massive opportunity if we could get over next Sunday and then we'll deal with whatever comes. And then just to go back to that point you were raising about um, Tony Gall and their tactics, what, what did you feel that they did wrong in that last 15, 20 minutes? Well, even before that, in, in, in the game itself, uh, broadly, like Tony Gall this year, Declan Bonner's come out, he said he's wanted to be more attacking. Uh, most of the games we've seen this year, including even when they played against Dublin, they were playing with at least two or three men up front. Now, yes, they've lost McBrady, but in the game since that, they, they still seem to be sticking to, to that general principle. Uh, on on Sunday, they were the more defensive of the two teams. Tyrone were trying to keep one or two up, either Richard Donnelly, uh, McAllister, Bradley. They were always trying to linger up the pitch and, and not get sucked back in. Donegal were just everybody back. Uh, then in the second half, they seemed to be doing a high press up the pitch in those huge space at the back. Whether they didn't have the legs, I don't know, but they certainly were struggling to then follow the Tyrone's runners uh, when Tyrone were starting to commit a wee bit more. Uh, so there was wee questions over their conditioning. I'm, I'm not so sure about that. I think conditioning more than anything is, is a huge part of mentality whenever you get to that last 15 minutes of, of, of a match. Uh, but they just seem confused about what they're after. As Tyrone have been doing the exact same thing, even from last year. It has only, as Mickey Hart has said, it's only been wee tweaks so they're exceptionally solid about what way they're doing. At the minute, that seems to lead to a game plan where we stick, we stick, we hold, we keep ourselves in the game and then we push for home. It's fairly dangerous because the, even with the way Donegal played, they still had thrown well on the racks after 10, 15 minutes that first half. It was four points in it. Paddy McGrath had come up from cornerback, scored a great point. Donegal had a couple of other chances. If they had got five or six in front, Throne were in a very difficult place and mightn't have come back at all and Donegal might have got that added energy in the end Or McNeilis was taken off Kieran Thompson was taken off pretty strangely and they put on Paul Brannan as if to look to hold the lead but Paul Brannan wouldn't have the legs that of the subs that Throne were putting on and then with Donegal doing this high press Throne sort of just broke them once or twice and then dramatically Donegal's heads drop uh, and again yes they're a young side uh, but it's them sort of things. Tactically, they were a wee bit over the place. They weren't sure of themselves. And then their heads dropped at a critical moment in the game. And then Throne just steamrolled them from then on. Does uh, Patrick Hampsey love the sight of anything more than Michael Murphy in the opposition lineup? Yeah, I think, look, when, whenever you're playing against a player with a huge reputation, it's almost, and, and you're a decent player yourself, it, it's a dream because all the pressure is on him. You know, he, he has to stand up and, and be counted. 
Michael Murphy has to do the dramatic stuff time and time again in that match. And so Hampshire just has to break him and stick with him and stick with him. And suddenly the pressure's on Murphy. Hampshire done that and then even got up the pitch himself and, and, and got a score. So he's done it a couple of times, but it's very, very difficult for top players in the modern game, especially out around the middle, when you're supposed to be free. You're supposed to get a few metres here and there. You just don't if a man's just sticking to you and taking himself out of the game to mark you. And we've seen that numerous times. Players have really struggled. I don't know why somebody hasn't tried to defend. I think people have tried to defend, but he hasn't done it. So it is still possible for them big players to count. But certainly, Amshi seems to have Murphy's measure, uh, and that's a huge bonus for Tyrone. If you're a Monaghan, then do you look at that um, performance and that style of play that Tyrone have had, that approach to games, and go, this first 15, 20 minutes, we absolutely need to blitz them. Let's go for goals. Let's try and do what we did to Kerry. Uh, to a certain extent, but Monon and Throne games, including that championship games, they tend to be really cagey. I'm sort of hoping both teams, that sheer level of positivity that both games finished on, I'm hoping both teams will come to Croke Park absolutely full of confidence and full of confidence in their attacking ability. That's probably the two biggest things for two teams lauded for their defensive uh, systems. The big talking point, the big positivity, the big thing that has got both counties so positive is this attacking displays they put in and the spread of attacking talent they now have. We've seen uh, McInespy and Malone doing it for, for Monaghan, Darren Hughes chipping in with lots of scores. McManus was comparatively quiet. Uh, so that's a huge bonus for, for Monaghan. Tyrone with Brennan back in, Bradley back in. Uh, it suddenly looks we're much more attacking a, an exciting unit. The ability of them boys to throw defenders and just the way they play the game, that off the cuff nature they play the game, Throne supporters love that. It's sort of reminiscent of Muggsy, sort of the, the way he carries himself on the pitch. So I'm sort of hoping that both teams, with that sheer sort of positivity that they're both coming in with, that they might sort of go at it a wee bit more. Uh, I'd be worried that the first half will probably be tense and then the second half again of football, football will turn out. But Monon will be more than confident that they can take Tyrone. It's just how deep-seated that belief is whenever the going really uh, starts to get tough. And the great stuff. Enjoy the build-up this week. Thanks a million. And no doubt we'll talk to you again in advance of that match at the weekend. Thanks too to Pat McEnany for joining us this morning to give us that sense in um, Monaghan of how things are.